So I wake up at 7.30am, not too early, but also not too late. As you can see, my face is all puffy and swollen from the good night's sleep that I've had. I muster the courage to get up, and as I do, I approach the curtains. The opening of the curtain marks the beginning of the day and is symbolic to sunlight that enters our eyes if you were able to be sleeping in nature. And as for nature, I weirdly fondle one of my houseplants to start the day with a bit of nature. I then make my way to the bathroom, which is a necessary visit in order to empty some of my reserves that I have been building up during my sleep. It is also an area in which I become clean and ready for the day at university. Brushing your teeth is very important and healthy teeth gives you the confidence to smile more, be happier and be less submissive to your peers. I spend about 5 minutes brushing my teeth every day, as I have to be sure that the bacteria that I harvested during the night are kept away from me and that my teeth remain clean for at least the next 12 hours. I have sped this clip up, but even then, it is only half of my toothbrushing duration. Because I don't own a hairdryer, I resort to using my bathroom's heater to dry my hair with the help of a towel. As I let my hair dry, my next morning process is making my bed. This gives me some sort of routine in my life, and without making my bed I feel uncomfortable. Making this bed takes a bit longer than I'm used to. As you can see, it is a rather large bed, and it requires me to hop around to get to the other side to make sure everything is even. Then there are many pillows that I have to position correctly in order for it to look nice. Voila. Then I apply my daily skincare routine, which is my trusted astral moisturising cream, and some body shop lotion that I use around the eyes to get rid of dry skin. I then walk to the kitchen where I make my daily breakfast which is always the same for the sake of routine. I have my trusted Weetabix with sliced banana and milk. In order to save from extra cleaning up, I peel the banana and use the eating knife to slice the banana using its own skin as a chopping board. This is the top tip which makes this breakfast easy to make and wash up. I then take my breakfast to the living room, where I have a small dining table. I take this time to enjoy my breakfast but quickly reflect on life and the upcoming day. I look out the window every now and then in order to soak up the nature available to me and think about how fortunate I am and how I should use this fortune to help others that may or may not be struggling in life. The ultimate goal is the improvement of worldwide living standards and having a daily reflection helps me visualise my goals. Ready to leave, I put on my socks and then my trainers. Fun fact, I can't tie my own shoelaces and I refuse to learn. Judge me all you want but I'd rather be in control of what I don't know. I leave my flat and take the stairs through the fire escape in order to save the electrical energy that would have otherwise been spent on taking the lift. I walk to uni for two main reasons. One is to avoid going on public transport in the current climate, but the other is that I love walking. Walking is a great form of exercise and it gives my mind clarity and an opportunity to dwell on thoughts that I might be having whilst also listening to music. There aren't many things in life that are as enjoyable as listening to music whilst walking the beautiful streets of London. Here is a random bit of castle that I see on my walk. Walking through central London never gets old. There is a lot to see and you can feel in touch with the city and its vast history. As you enjoy this walk with me, I would like to take the time out to talk a little bit about myself. My name is Jubair and I'm a final year PhD student at University College London. I am lucky enough to be still allowed to go into university twice a week during the pandemic, where I have access to the labs which have been essential for my PhD work. We'll talk a bit more about this when I do get into the labs and show you some of the equipment and some of the stuff that we were working on. But as you can see, the streets of London are pretty quiet these days. Before the pandemic, there would have been traffic jams all the time. Here you can see the Warner Brothers studio in London. Just until recently, there was a statue of Newt from Fantastic Beasts, but it's a shame they took him away so soon. I love this walk, and the closer you get to the university, the better the views get. And you can also see such great architecture. I love European architecture, and central London is full of lots of it. 
has lasted the test of time. They were built with so much love and attention that it just shows. Seeing the large red double decker buses parading through the streets has just become second nature to me. My favourite part of the walk to uni has to be this, the walk through Russell Square Gardens. This is a beautiful and fully managed park situated near Russell Square Tube Station. It is perfect place for walking your dog, going for a jog or meeting up with friends. The garden has a really well kept grass and an assortment of plants. And I cut through this park in order to reach my university, which is only about five minutes from here. Just take the moment out to appreciate nature. Living in a city means that you are not always surrounded by nature. The park is in such a lovely area of London and is so close to great universities such as the School of African and Oriental Studies and the University College London. Here we see SOAS campus one of the world's leading institutions for the study of Asia, Africa and the Middle East. The walk towards the entrance of my department is pretty cool, where I pass Birkbeck University and have views towards Euston Church, which was built in 1850 but looks as if it could have been built yesterday. This is the walk to the outside of my department, Mechanical Engineering, which is situated opposite a Waterstones bookstore built under one of the prettiest buildings I have ever seen. But instead of going to the university right now, I instead keep on walking as I need to do a spot of grocery shopping as I am now near the closest little available to me for some sourdough bread. They make the best bread of all the supermarkets in my opinion so I won't waste the opportunity to get some and save myself a separate trip. The walk to Lidl sees me go through the very end of Tottenham Court Road which is world famous and which is adjacent to the very famous high street of Oxford Circus. Walking this way down Tottenham Court Road leads you to Warren Street. On the way back from the supermarket, I take a different route back to the university entrance so that you can see a little bit more about what the UCL campus can offer. We can see University College Hospital on the left and one on the right we can see the beautiful UCL Medical Campus which is made of redstone and looks like something out of a Harry Potter movie. We also catch a glimpse of the main UCL campus where the dome of the library forms the UCL logo. Only selected staff and student can enter it at the moment, so entrance is restricted. I walk down towards the entrance of mechanical engineering and enjoy the empty streets and the gorgeous townhouses. Take another moment out to enjoy how satisfying it is to walk down these streets. At the end of the road, I take a left to come back at the entrance of the building, which was apparently designed by engineers with its bright orange facade. Take a moment to put on my face mask as it is a requirement for entry and walking down any common halls. Then I walk through the iron gates and tap on the card reader to register myself into the campus. I tap again to open the doors to the entrance of the engineering building. And again to open the barriers for me. As I proceed to open a door that leads me to the newly refurbished staircase, I walk up it. And yet again there is another card access door. UCL security right now is very strict, and for good reason. At last I reach my office, where I'm trying to open the door and my friend and colleague Phoebe makes a weird noise at me. And here is my office, there are only two people allowed right now. But as a PhD student, you can see just how messy this office is. But not all this mess was made by me. There are samples left by a previous postdoc. There is paper everywhere and so many cables. But at least Phoebe and I have our own monitors so we can pretend like we are important when we read our scientific journals on our big 27 inch 4K displays. This office is in need of a cleanup, but don't worry, it will be getting a spring cleaning soon. Before the pandemic, about 45 people were using this tiny office. Once I settle into the office for the day, I begin the PhD day by checking my emails and checking my calendar for any meetings. Luckily, there are none, but I still have work to do regarding editing papers. So this is the main lab that I spend most of my time in. Right now it is messy because there is no dedicated person for cleanup operations. This is our biomaterials lab where we produce polymeric fibres for many applications, such as drug delivery, tissue engineering and even air and water filtration systems. 
We have a lot of equipment here, from basic scales all the way to speed mixers, rheometers and centrifuges. The main way we produce our polymeric fibres is by a process called pressurised gyration, which was invented in our lab in 2013 and can produce lots of useful fibres in just seconds. I will give you a demonstration of how this works in a bit. The lab also contains lots of different solvents stored in fire resistant drawers and a selection of many different polymers that we can make into polymer solutions and spin into fibres using pressurised gyration. Here is Hamta, a new PhD student at our lab. She is showing me what experiments she plans to do today. As she is new, I am guiding her with her work as a senior PhD student. A large portion of my duties as a PhD student have been to supervise other students, all the way from an undergraduate level to PhD level. Hamta quickly shows us her samples from before and some of the fibres she has already spun. As you can see from the petri dishes, these fibres are tiny in thickness, but a lot of them can be produced. Here we show the pressurised gyration setup which includes a fast spinning motor. This remote can switch it on and off. Amta carefully extracts 2 millilitres of a polymer solution which she previously created. This polymer solution is polylactic acid dissolved in chloroform. PLA can be found in tea bags and is biocompatible so can be used in the body without too many problems. The top of the pot is attached to a gas inlet and everything is secured before starting it. Hamta then stops the motor from turning and exposes the security guard. She can then collect these fibres. They are ready to be packed into petri dishes so we can analyse them later. This is how the fibres look in their hand and also I am crumpling these to show you how brittle some of these fibres can be as we used PMMA for this one. This is the tour of our other bigger office where some other students usually stay. Currently we are operating at 25% capacity. This is the other lab where we produce other fibres and other polymeric materials. This expensive looking machine is an electro spinning machine which produces fibres using an electric field. The other one is also an electro spinning machine. There is a precise scale here and some old high speed camera for recording micro bubbles as we produce them. Then we have the wonderful ultraviolet lab and a light microscope for analysis. I go back to the office to catch up on my work but also provide feedback to a piece of work Hamta has been writing. As she is new to scientific writing, she has asked for my help and I am more than willing to help provide it. I briefly open the blinds to show you that I am able to spy on students I need from my office. At exactly 1.30 I decide to get up and go for lunch. I decide to go to for Tesco for a meal deal as the options are cheap and healthy choices are available. On my way to Tesco, I take the other way of Tottenham Court Road which if you keep walking through, you can reach Oxford Circus. I take my affordable Tesco meal deal back and head towards Udi. 
I decide to get my usual, as always, chicken sandwich, some sushi and a Pepsi. I then log on to my computer where I enjoy my food watching my new favourite YouTuber who you may have heard of. Elizabeth Phillips, a medical student and artist living in London. I subsequently spend a few minutes reading papers in trying to redesign a pressurised gyration port to produce fibres with a core and a sheath. Something that has been done but can be improved. I then go back to the bigger office where Hamta is waiting for me and we go through the literature review that she has been working on for the past few months. The weather outside decides to be nice for a while and we can see me take sneak peeks outside the window which also has good views of the London streets. I am incredibly critical when it comes to giving feedback on written work and I have apologised to her many times in advance if she decides to hate me after this session. At exactly 4.05 I decide to call it the end of the university day. Hamta agrees and we leave together. Because of the pandemic, university working hours have been greatly reduced and as a result we cannot overstay. Usually you would expect PhD students to be working as late as 9pm quite regularly. So then, I embark on my journey back home and this time it begins with a walk through Russell Square Gardens. I arrive back home and put my stuff away so I can relax for a bit. I take the time to upload the footage and start editing the masterpiece which will surely consume many of my hours. So I do hope you do subscribe and like the video and it was appealing to you to watch. After a few hours I decide to make lunch from leftover salad. I add chicken and a bit of extra sauces to create a delicious dinner. Then at the tender time of only 9pm I decide to head off bed and call it a day. You have been amazing guests, thank you.